Greetings. I get questions periodically uh, about running business, but even more than questions on the subject of nursery in particular. Uh, one thing I hear frequently from people um, and talk about, well, I, you know, I'm going to maybe sell my place in the Midwest, and I'm definitely thinking about moving to the island, you know, but, oh, we're going to be ch poor as church mouse, man, you know. Uh, and uh, it, people seem like they put themselves at an economic disadvantage when they don't really need to. Um, this kind of disturbs me because, you know, it's a capitalistic society. Making money in a capitalistic society is actually a very simple thing to do. Um, it all depends on how you think about it. And obviously here in Hawaii, and I'm going to focus on that type of program, we have so many cottage industries. These are very small operations, uh, often, you know, mom and pop things out of the home, uh, whether they're agricultural or artistic, you know, with a very successful soap maker here, for instance, in Hawaii uh, that's been expanding. Uh, Filthy Farm Girl, that's the name of it. Uh, it's cute. They get real cute labels on the soap beauty. It's really something. They started here in the farmer's market, but it's getting bigger all the time. Starting to see it in the stores, and for all I know, they have an internet presence. And so, <clears throat> I, I would like to focus on how to use a cottage industry through the internet to be able to make a living. Um, I do this. I'm no expert at it. I don't pretend to know all the ins and outs. There's people out there who are really sharp on this. You know, for me, I'm a little laid back about it. I take charge of it. If I get money out of it, I'm happy. Uh, it doesn't cost very much to do it. That's the main point. You know, it used to be when we were going to go into business, well, we had to, you know, maybe set up a brick-and-mortar store somewhere. So we had to rent a building, own a building, buy a building. That was the traditional old-time way. Now, it was possible, though, say, for instance, if you were a plumber, or a carpenter or some service industry. Um, like these days I see mobile dog grooming salons, for instance. Now these are fairly small businesses that a person can get into with just a vehicle and a little bit of equipment. Um, not too expensive to do that type of stuff. I also see local people who do uh, uh, food preparation here at the farmer's markets. And I know there's several of them here. Uh, like the lady who does the French crepes. Uh, she she makes a lot of money. She works for it, but she's making a living. I see guys uh, with wood-fired pizza ovens, even you know, stuff like that. There's a, there, you know, the basic taco truck concept. Now, even this though takes quite a bit of money to get into because you need a vehicle, you need the equipment, you know. When it comes to internet sales, well, you've got to have a product, absolutely, whatever that product is, and. I mean, from my opinion, it should be a product that you'll be able to stake on. Something that your reputation, uh, you know, that you'll stand behind. Um, that helps a lot, is to have an excellent product. It also helps to have a niche product. Some sort of product that maybe they can't find easily at Amazon. I mean, most of my business, the majority of my life, has been supplying services and products that you can't easily find otherwise. This is a real good opportunity for people. Actually, I recall well, an example when I uh, was running nursery in California. Uh, we got to a point back in the uh, 90s where water plant gardening became very, very popular. And there were very few growers in the state of California providing stock that we could buy and sell in the nursery. I remember meeting Walt McAllister, who was one of the early guys up by Yonkville, California, who went into this business big time. And I think Walt had maybe three to five acres as a farm, but he only used 1.5 acres to produce the uh, water plants he was growing. And he didn't use tanks or anything on that order. Everything was in black plastic pots lined up in a field just like spruce trees, but the pots didn't have holes in the bottom. They were sealed. And he'd grow water lilies in them and pickerel rushes and papyrus and you name it. And uh, Walt claimed that on the uh, 1.5 acres that he used to gross a million dollars a year. I worked hard, you know. And he didn't hire a lot of people either. Walt ran most of this himself. He was the truck driver in the whole works. 
And that's typical, too, with this sort of business. But as an example, here's a tiny piece of land with a great idea. He was in the right place at the right time. And he made a lot of money, and he retired early, and other people took the business over later. Now, you know, as far as what, what I do, for instance, I supply tropical seeds and tropical fruit trees uh, and plants that are just not easy to find. Uh, and so because of that niche, people are looking for me. So it doesn't cost much to get a website built. This is the first basic tool past the product that a person needs. you got to get out there somehow on the Internet. And, uh, you know, there's so many different ways. There's people that hire for this. Some of us are so skilled we can do it ourselves. You know, I, I'm not good at, uh, at writing um, uh, software and packages like that. I'm not really interested in that stuff. I have friends. <laughs> Several friends that if I, you know, needed the help, in fact, my internet business was built by a close friend of mine uh, who was a retired software engineer who went into construction, and we used to work together building, uh, you know, gazebos and pergolas and decks and stuff in the garden designs I do. That's really how we got close there. Um, happened to be the brother of the guy that made the fish sitting here behind me. <laughs> <laughs> the lady, rather, Barbara's brother. Um, anyhow, so, you know, I had connections, and, uh, and we worked out arrangements, and I got my website built. I'm very happy with the work. Uh, you know, time I need help with it, and, you know, he will step in and give me a hand, continue to modify it as time goes on and so on. There's been changes over the years. Used to be everything I had was written for uh, full-screen desktop computers. Well, nowadays, everything is these little tiny things that I can't even see, you know, I inhale a smartphone by accident. And so we had to change things to get it to run on that kind of a system. Otherwise, Google won't search you if you can't go to a mobile device. But uh, you need a product, A, number one. It should be a good product. Hopefully it's something that you can't easily find otherwise. Uh, or is of much higher quality than what's usually found on the market. Or maybe it's naturally grown when it's hard to find something that, of that sort, you know. Um, different concepts, just ideas of places where it's not really readily available. You will need a good website, and there are multiple different ways you can accommodate that. Um, so I won't even go into those possibilities. You can just go out and hire some guy to do it for you, you know, there's services out there. Um, so once you got the product and you got it, basically the website is your storefront. And so you can live out here somewhere out in the rhubarb, you know, um, if that's what you want out of life, where you're totally in, in, inconspicuous and nobody even knows you exist. But yet you can sell to the entire planet today because of the internet. This is really, it's been a revolution. Uh, it's just amazing. This kind of opportunity did not exist when I was younger. Um, I have taken as much advantage of it as I can uh, to be able to use it. Now, like I say, the brick and mortar stores or the taco trucks or whatever you were using, these, this is a pretty expensive stuff. Websites are cheap. Um, they don't cost very much. So, you need product with some back stock so you have enough to supply in case you get hit hard. You need a website to distribute off of. But, almost more important than the first two is figuring out how to promote the product so people will find it. Because you can post it on the internet. I've had several things out there that have been just posted. And the amount of traffic I see over the years on most of them, it's, it's minuscule. It doesn't even matter. Uh, on the other hand, you all know I've got a YouTube channel. Well, the YouTube channel is actually my primary sales tool. This is, uh, you know, what used to be a business card. Uh, and, of course, the YouTube uh, videos are also connected to my sales store and my website. So, you know, they go back and forth. And if I was a little more aggressive about it, I could link each and every one of them right straight through my sales department uh, just to make sure that if you saw something you liked, it'd pop up almost automatically right in my store. But 
I'm just not that aggressive to worry about it, and so I kind of let this thing take care of itself. Depends on what level of business you really want to deal with. Uh, I'm retired. I don't want to work too hard, so I kind of keep it down a little bit. Many things you know, that I could let go, you know. I could post all the plants in the nursery on the internet and start shipping them all over the place, but more work than I want to do. Seeds are what I like. But you need to promote. And today I think the simplest way to promote is uh, on you know, social media sites and on uh, uh, video sites. You create quality video presentations uh, displaying whatever it is you're doing in an interesting fashion. Make it totally desirable so other people look at it and go, ooh, I want that, you know. Whatever your spot is, Facebook is another place where businesses hang out. I'm almost every good business these days has a site on Facebook, and people find these things. I find YouTube to be my favorite place. That's This is, uh, this is where I like to be. And... Uh, you know, it's, some things sell themselves, you know, a very delicious piece of fruit, when I eat it in front of the camera, seems to almost have a subliminal reaction with people, that it slides in under their guard. It's sort of like a laugh. People start laughing, next thing you know, everybody laughs, you know. Yeah, a good tasting piece of food is quite similar. We begin to salivate, you know, when we see it. And so it's a subliminal thing. I don't have to be overly gifted at sales when the, something is really good to eat and you guys see it happening. Um, I sell a lot of seeds because it's just eating a piece of fruit in front of a camera. Um, but of course, demeanor has a lot to do with it. Uh, I don't know about you, but I don't like high pressure sales. You know, uh, I don't like special offers much or any of that BS. You know? What I like to see is uh, a person who's fairly low-key and has what I need and is willing to sell it to me and is friendly and, uh, and doesn't try to drive me into something I didn't want, you know, uh, like going into a used car lot, you know, ah, that's the worst situation for me. You know, the guy in the checkered sport coat, you know, let me put you in this baby today, you know, like that. And I, it's not my line of work. I don't enjoy that sort of pressure. Um, so, you know, each and every one of us has a certain way that we deal with things, you know, that's a, our best means. And me, it's somewhat laissez-faire, kind of laid back, um, but honest. I mean, I'm not a deceitful person. Apparently it crosses, you know, and people notice the fact that um, I stand behind what I say, I stand behind what I sell. If it messes up, I'm going to replace it for you, no questions asked, you know, I it's just not that important to me uh, to, you know, to, to be any harder about it than that. It's, I want everybody happy. I guess that shows. So, you need a way to promote. You've got to have the product. The product hopefully is a niche or extreme quality or some such thing. Uh, you need to, uh, to uh, have a website to be able to use as a storefront. You need a promotional method, okay? You also need a way of taking in funds and keeping track and so on. And for most of us who run small businesses on the internet, I, I think PayPal is probably the best solution. It will cost you, they charge you for every transaction. But it works pretty well. It takes debit cards, it takes credit cards, you know, so you'd be halfway around the world, stick your visa in the in the slot there and the money's going to show up in my account and the accounts are linked to my bank accounts and I move it off from there. Very simple and it also has not only invoicing, so if people need invoices you can generate them and send them to them via email right off of PayPal. Um, you can also, uh, it keeps records and logs of everything and so when you get down, like right now we're doing sales tax. Um, for Hawaii, or this rather here it's excise tax, you know, it's about the same thing. Uh, we're doing that, and well, you know, otherwise I probably would have had to keep books on all of this stuff, but I don't have to because it's all right there on PayPal. 
It shows exactly how much tax everybody paid on everything uh, in my activity field. And so this makes running a business pretty simple. You don't even have to bother with a bookkeeper much. You do have to collect the data and give it to the state and give it to uh, you know the federal government when you're at the end of the year. But, uh, recently I was getting frightened because there was some activity in Congress and it's ongoing about trying to uh, get these internet sites to have to pay the sales tax to each and every state that you're shipping a product to. Well, for me, here in Hawaii, I tell you, if that's what happened, I'd have to close the store. I am not going to go ahead and log and report and, and send sales tax to 50 states out there just because I sold some pepper seeds, you know. That's nuts. Well, there was recently a uh, South Dakota Supreme Court decision that said that anybody running internet business, e-commerce, who has less than 200 local customers or making less than $100,000 a year is not going to be required to have to report the sales tax to other than to the state that you are operating in. So that was a savior because I, I don't mind paying off the sales tax here to Hawaii. This is fine. You know, no, no problem. It's a simple process. Uh, the one. That's all I want to have to deal with is the one. You know, otherwise we're going to have to do our state income tax and we're going to do our federal taxes on all this too. So the one, uh, you know, place that we have to send sales tax is plenty enough as far as I'm concerned. And so if you're running small cottage industry and you're not making over hundred grand a year off it, which a lot of us don't, um, but then you're, you're, you're protected uh, currently. You know, and now different states are going to have different regulations about what you're doing and so on. And when, and no matter where you are, uh, if you're operating with something so like you're making jewelry or you're making candles or, you know, this sort of thing, you know, baked goods maybe, you know, through a third certified baking kitchen, you're going to, uh, uh, you're going to need a business license. There's going to be paperwork involved on some of that. Now, in some places, and definitely here in Hawaii, um, if what you're doing is farm related, it's a product that came off this farm, and if it's being sold from the farm direct to the consumer, and this also applies to e-commerce um, because my stuff is picked up right here and taken from the farm. Um, I don't need any special paperwork at all. No business licenses, no nothing because I'm a farmer. And so because my business is agricultural in the state of Hawaii, my paperwork and the requirements for it to do this are so minimal it isn't funny. You know, most of us hate bureaucracy and paperwork anyway. Well, Hawaii's cut that for farmers. Now, I, I don't know about every state and in every situation at all, and so I won't even attempt, but I can speak for where I'm at here now. And so I can sell my seeds and I can sell my plants here, um, you know, without any kind of special paperwork whatsoever. The plants need to be uh, inspected if they're leaving for the mainland. Um, now, there are special laws there that are individual in every state. State of California, state of Arizona, um, state of Texas, state of Louisiana. They require anything that comes from Hawaii out of a nursery shipped to their state to have been pre-certified. That's a special process where you log everything you're growing with the local ag department here in Hawaii. They come out periodically, they inspect the stock, you know, on the site, and then they give you your own rubber stamp where I can stamp everything and I don't have to take it to the, the inspection department. Um, it's more hoops that I'm interested in going through and it's more bookkeeping problems. So I don't certify. So that limits me. I can ship to 46 states. I can ship to foreign countries too, mostly if I wanted to, but I don't want to because that's a hassle and it's very expensive. Um, but say for instance, with an agricultural good here in Hawaii, another benefit that we have is if what you have, you're going to have to ship it. Well, 
There's all sorts of possible ways you could do that. I mean, the post office is just down the street from me. Most of my seeds go through the post office. Um, cheap, easy, efficient. I don't have any serious problems with the USPS going into the mainland from here. It's usually very fast. In fact, I had a two-day delivery to Sydney, Australia the other day even. I guess it leaves here on a plane, gets in Australia in no time flat. There are ways around shipping and things that can make it far more lucrative since, you know, sending uh, heavy items, like a bunch of potted plants, off this island and trying to get them into the mainland. Oh, I mean, the box can weigh, you know, 10 to 30 pounds. Boy, that could add up. It's post office. Well, FedEx comes over here to this island with their planes filled with cargo. But when they leave, the planes are half empty. We don't have enough stuff that we're supplying here that they have to move back that fills their holes. And so because of that, they made special arrangements with the Hawaiian Floriculture and Nursery Association to be able to ship flowers and, and uh, horticultural products from the island on their planes uh, for approximately 25% of the usual cost. So like, you know, the box of 10 pounds overnight delivery that might cost you 125 bucks uh, to send in FedEx, I can do it for 25 or 30. You know, because I belong to the organization, I got to pay dues with the organization. So you know, another hoop to go through. It cost me 250 dollars a year to stay in the organization. There are other benefits to it too, but um, you know, there are ways around the shipping even. So. You know, you don't get tangled up in the details because the details tend to work themselves out as you move along. It's the central focus you really want to deal with here, which is what is your product, how are you going to put it out there, and, you know, how are you going to promote it. This is really the important three key things. Almost everything else will kind of almost take care of itself if you're a conscientious and thoughtful human being and bother to do your research and field work. You don't want to step over the government. You know, you really don't want to. It's not worth it. Play the game. Uh, you know, as far as the bookkeeping is concerned for all this, I just use Excel. Mine is, uh, it's a 2007 even, you know, it's an 11-year-old program. Works fine for doing my books, uh, you know, and it'll generate invoices too if I need them. So, as is typical with small businesses, uh, most of the time these things don't make any money for the first couple of years. And so if you're the kind of person that throws in the towel and gives up quickly, you probably won't succeed. You need to have the uh, wherewithal, the will and the funding to be able to hold in there long enough until it starts to become profitable. Of course, the less overhead and less input you have, the faster this cycle turns. And so, most cottage industry internet businesses do not have huge stock rooms of stuff piled up. You know, you don't have a lot of back stock inventory. You're probably, you know, producing almost as you go along a lot of times. Um, and your overhead isn't probably that great. Uh, whatever equipment and machinery it takes you to do, you know, what you're doing, Packaging is one consideration, too. You need packaging. It has to be good. The guys at FedEx are a bunch of gorillas. They'll chew your stuff up on you if you don't pack it perfectly. Um, there's all kinds of little things like that to consider, but once you open an Internet business like that as a cottage industry, uh, suddenly you find yourself in a very, very wonderful situation with the IRS and the state ordinarily because uh, um, small business owners get major advantages. You can write off so many things for an internet business. It's, uh, and, and really, there are no set hard rules on a lot of this. You know, sometimes uh, people have this feeling that it's a fixed thing. It's not monolithic at all. Um, you know, what is part of the business and what you can write off and for the taxes and so on is very much connected to your own personal creativity. I don't know, folks who are used to working for someone else, you know, well, you get, they do your taxes, they deduct all the stuff, blah, blah, blah. It gets to be kind of a pain to have to do it all yourself, but 
Uh, boy, there's tremendous advantages as far as things you bring in, uh, how you can deal with them with the tax man. Just to give you an idea of uh, how much advantage there actually is for the average person. Now, now I am reclassed as a farmer. This is a farm here in Hawaii. Well, my driveway is part of the farm. I just repaired the driveway. We will be writing those expenses off. The fences out here that the pigs got through cost me a bundle to fix them up. That's all be able, I'm able to write it off. The fences are part of the farm operation. Being your own businessman is a little more difficult. It takes more time and there's a lot of consideration and record keeping and you got a lot of hats you wear. But the advantages of doing it economically are massive. Hey, my main point again in all of this is that this is not complicated. It's not rocket science. It's internet business. It's e-commerce. That's all it is. Uh, just about anybody can get it together. And as I say, I hear people be moaning that, you know, oh, I don't know if I move, what am I going to do for a living, and so on. Uh, well, that kind of business, once you've got it set up, it's modular. You can take it anywhere you want to. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. My business transferred from California to here with hardly a hitch. Well, even hardly a seam in it. It was amazing how smooth the process went. I did change its nature some when I came here. But I used mostly the same tools, same format, same basic ideas. And so it went real smooth. Uh, as I say, Hawaii is real good with it. And when you're under 100000 nationally, as far as your income with the small businesses, you don't need to worry about all the sales tax BS. So, anyway, uh, this is just a short shout out about how you can make some money out of your house. Uh, you know, don't sit around thinking that you've got to be a poor person. You don't need to be. You can make as much money as you want to make. Uh, it's just a matter of we got a good idea. Are you promoting it well? You know, that's really what it is. It's so much about being in the right place at the right time with the right idea it helps a lot. Um, there's some ideas like a scotch tape store probably never going to fly, you know. <laughs> but there's a lot of others that will. I mean, selling tinfoil hats in Roswell, New Mexico, you got it, buddy. Aloha. See you later and thanks for watching.